I hear the ticking of the clock. Tick tock on the clock. Tick tock, you know. Stop, stop to the heart. Tick tock, you know. Stop, stop, stop. It's Tuesday. Hey, Kaiser here with Guy Baltimore, myself, and Danny. <laughs> Yay, my son. Hello, hello. Here for the seventh installment of our ongoing, hard hitting Doomsday Clock series. Where we do the ins and outs and the all abouts, talking about each issue as it drops. If you're starting here, go back and watch the first one and then cut caught up. Yeah, why would you start at part seven? Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing to start in. It's a great issue. Don't get yes, it. Yes, it's a great issue, but still. But still, there's so yeah. much that you need it. Yeah, it's yeah. only great for what came before it. Yeah, that's maybe. right. We get some answers. And well, let's, some uh, questions. So. Yeah, there's still questions. Yeah, they, they, they fix that. So one of the biggest things up to this point has been the lead up to Doomsday Clock has been, look, it's Superman and Dr. Manhattan. Ooh. And then issue one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like, what are we going to see? Superman and Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> Most. Well, that would be here. Yes. In issue seven. Oh, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. Now, the write-up to here has been great. We've got to introduce to two great new characters, the Mime and the Marionette, who have become darlings amongst readers. Mm -hmm. Us here as well. Uh, Rorschach, his identity has been revealed. He is the son of the uh, psychiatrist of the original Warshack, uh, the Johnny Lightning, Johnny Thunder, Johnny, Johnny Thunder. Thunder, Johnny Thunder. Yeah. Uh, his arc is move in here. Uh, we got Saturn Girl and all all the events have led up to this. And uh, if you wants to jump in, you'll notice on one of the the covers is the lantern, the green lantern that uh, Johnny Thunder uh, was drawn to in the last issues. Yeah. Right, he talks about how there's a genie yes. in, inside. And so he's... Is, is this a green lantern lantern? Is it made? So this is Alan Scott, the Golden Age Green Lantern's lantern. Okay. Yes. Um, right, because that's what how it opens up with... Um, Right. You, you see the little blue moth, which we find out that the little blue moth is Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Um, and how he has already altered the whole Alan Scott um, be, becoming the Green Lantern. Um, well, in this, he's altered all of that. Yeah, well, in the current reality, he never became the Green Lantern because he died. Correct. Because Manhattan went back and moved the lantern six inches during a yep train crash yeah uh, that's a pretty i mean for a moth to do that yeah. <laughs> it's a it's pretty it's pretty green powerful oh wow so up to this point uh the joker has teamed up with the mime and marionette they have captured batman and the comedian right previous to this uh, Rorschach, Saturn Girl, and Johnny Thunder found the Green Lantern. And Vite. And, yes, and Vite gathered together. And this picks up where that took off. So, Guy, yeah. do you want to lead us into where this starts? Oh, man. Well, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with this. I mean, there's obviously the whole realization that Manhattan is behind everything that's going on with DC Rebirth, which, you know, honestly, as good as this relaunch has been, I have to thank him for that, even though his whole machinations have been diabolical. It's yes. awful, but it's been great for storytelling purposes. <laughs> yeah. It really has. And 
so we kind of lead in because the last issue was the comedian just bursts in and starts shooting up this gathering of supervillains and you know at that point the mime marionette and, and joker knock out both batman and then they also knock out the comedian so the joker's trying to figure out what's going on with the comedian and he doesn't pay attention to batman and then right. at that point roshark and um you know, Viet and all those, they, they come in. So every all the major players come together in one place. And for the first real significant time, they bring in Dr. Manhattan into the picture. And it's awesome. And I think one of the funniest scenes is the fact that, you know, when he appears and he's exactly like he is in Watchmen, where he's completely naked as, as he is blue. And Joker's like, whoever you are, put some clothes on, for God's sake, or at least for mine. Yeah, at least for my so, sake. <laughs> this is a milestone in DC Comics history. I think this is the first month that we have seen more superhero Wang than I think we have in yes. any other comic yes. book. Accurate. First Batman, now this. I don't know where to go from here anymore. DC now stands for Dick Cock. <laughs> <laughs> you just have so dark, but... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bleep bleep. Oh, right. and if we didn't uh, at the beginning, all these are spoiler episodes. There is no spoiler right. free. We're diving yeah. deep into these from the get go. Yeah, we, we don't yeah. we we don't waste time with this. It's straight up spoiler. But you get to find what what's Manhattan's deal. You really get to. Find out because I mean this whole thing has been built up between Doctor Manhattan and Superman. You know each universe's biggest heavy hitters, and yet up to this point they've been relatively off the grid, and Superman still is, but it's leading into something big, something that is ultimately going to end in blackness for some reason, and we still have that great mystery. But then you also find out stuff about Vite. And the new Rorschach, and it just starts. We, we've taken it slow, and we've done this casual buildup, and now we're just going to drop major plot points one after another. And yeah. it didn't feel rushed, but now you're just sitting. It's like, wow, a lot happened in this book. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Go ahead. I was going to know you're definitely right because um, two big things. One, I love the way that they frame this issue. Um, it's very reminiscent of, you know, the Watchmen of old when you had that standalone issue of, of Dr. Manhattan and he tells his story in the broken time. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it again here, which is great because it's really interesting because, you know, on first reading, you're like, oh, this is a little disjointed. And then on the second reading, you're like, oh, because this is where he's lining up with this and you know, the uh, checkerboard floor and he steps off the floor to Mars and you're like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. Um, and then I I don't remember who said it, but I feel like one of us called out Vite's faux cancer in one yes. of the episodes. You should probably look out and see who was right. Um, and the, we are right. Yeah, um, right. he does not have cancer. He used it as a ploy to get Rorschach to do what he wanted. So again, manipulating people to do what he wants to do uh, for, for good the, or bad. For the greater good. Right. For the greater good of which is only for his, so right. he can take all I the have credit. A plan, you know, and that's it's classic Vite, and it's true to his character, and it's actually absolutely what he should be doing, what you kind of expect of that character. Um, we also, and, oh. I would say, we also learned why the comedian is here, what his mission was. Yeah. Which he failed. Yeah, which he didn't like even bother like doing. He got completely sidetracked from the very beginning. Yeah. What was his mission again? His mission was to find and kill Vite's cat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Instead, he. Lost he his... Instead of he, which which, I think is a really interesting um, experiment. I mean, there, at the very end of the the comic, there's actually a couple of documents yeah, that kind of really detail good. how Vite did the cloning process in order to create this cat, and you know the, the sole purpose of it is to basically be a magnet to draw Doctor Manhattan to him. 
and I, I found that completely fascinating. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, with the tachyon particles and and all that kind of stuff. So because I thought, I thought that now it's spliced between both Manhattan and Mubastis from when Vite tried to kill him way back in Watchmen. Exactly. So they're, they're really integrating all the plot points into this story really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to share my favorite panel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. He sees he sees Batman get out of the. Uh... He's like, "What is it, honey?" At first, I thought he was gonna be like the bull. He'd be like, Ooh. "And I love immediately after that that the Joker's like, God, I wish I had some popcorn because he knows what's about to go down." Yeah. And it was a that was a, it was a really brilliantly uh, choreographed fight scene between the mime I mean the the marionette and Batman mm-hmm. breaking those the the armor and the yep. one of the ears off. I was like, yep. You can even and you can even see it kind of go right. into, um, you know, cut it's through arm. his armor. Yeah. yeah. Like that's um, no joke. And, and I love the. Uh, the uh, um, the mime shooting the gun, and then the Joker saying, "I didn't see that coming." <laughs> it really is classic Joker. <laughs> it is. It is yeah. There's so much classic Joker in this issue alone um, yeah. that I I absolutely loved it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. When Rorschach's beating the shit out of him, and he looks up, and it shows the panel of Rorschach, and put the Smile on his face. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think he's lost it. I think after finding out the truth, I think he has snapped. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's totally snapped. And, and but he says he even says it that the whole realization that he was that he had lied to him um, in order to use him because he knew how to use him and all that. He he, he even says it that Ro- he's no longer Rorschach. Yeah. And he started uh, he, taking off, but we didn't. He started taking off the mask. Now, right. So, I mean, what are we going? Are we going to get Reggie, or is this the birth of something new? Uh, and that that's is- what I'm excited to see about what. I'm what, kind of feeling new. I, I feel it's going to be worse somehow. It's almost going to be Joker level psycho- psychosis. I think. Right. I mean, is yeah. I, I I'm I'm not familiar with what's going on in DC. I mean, could he be the new Red Hood, or oh, you or think, something you think of that move, level? Move him in as as a as a main player in DC from here on out. I don't think he survives this, honestly. Not really. I don't. I don't think Rorschach's gonna survive all twelve issues. History repeating itself. Yeah. What I do love. Yeah. And- you know, it's one of those small little throwaway lines, but all this, the, the entire scene with Manhattan and, and you know, the Watchmen character, from the Watchmen world characters when they're there, it was so fascinating to see, like, oh, I didn't save you because of your baby. I saved you because of your babies. Which one? Yeah. So we find out that uh, Marionette's pregnant again, and that, that moment with the mime, he's like, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was really great. And then you find out, you that Vite went to Lori first. She turned him down. Mm-hmm. And that's why he went to the mime and the marionette. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not it, building up to hearing that we're going to find, you know, Lori and Dan at some point. Um, we just have to. Um, but it was a nice little, like, callback to she's not going to be able to, to, you know, to bring Manhattan back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was really kind of fascinating. And then the other thing, to borrow a phrase from Marvel, everything ends. So mm-hmm. a few years ago when they were doing, you know, that whole storyline that led to Secret Wars, the yeah. whole tagline was everything ends. Um, and now we have that again here in the DC Doomsday Clock with everything ends. Um, so I think that's very fascinating, very kind of interesting. He sees all these futures until he doesn't. Right. Superman. Right. And, yeah, so- and who's at the end? We finally see... Soups. Yep. He's mm-hmm. there at the end, coming at him with his eye, eyes all fiery red, and yeah. and that's yeah. uh, that's such a great. I mean, I got chills talking about it. It's such a great setup to where all the issues have made you hungry for more. 
the end of this one makes you you what the hell more than all the others you need yeah. to know what happens mm -hmm. and it's not going right. to happen next or the next next it's going to be like the last damn issue so we're going to have to <laughs> yeah but to to frame what Baltimore just said so at the end of the comic uh, Dr. Manhattan Manhattan is talking about he can there's a point where he can't see and he doesn't know if it's because he causes reality to no longer exist or if Superman kills him. Yeah. And it's like, well, well, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> I need to know these things. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, that has him excited. Like, this is the first time I've been curious in, what, since 1950 or whatever he says. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The... Uh, and one of the things I really liked is, you know, they always have those little quotes at the very end. Mm -hmm. And it uh, really stood out to me. is like, seeing is believing is a blind spot in man's vision. And this issue is titled Blind Spot. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. that whole thing, you know, you can't see. One, you can't see the mistakes, your own your own mistakes. And two, you can't see what's going on around you. Like Manhattan can see everything around him except for this. And that's causing him to, you know, get some blue angst. Face. I'm overcome with curiosity for the first time since 1959. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, on a, a, a quick side tangent, I really have to give it to the artist of this series, Gary Frank, just because his work is so consistent with the Watchmen. It looks just like a perfect, you know, compliment continuation of that. It's just, the artwork's gorgeous in it, and it just really brings back, you know, old feelings when you read, you know, when you read Watchmen for the first time. And it's just, it, it's so good, and the, the story is so well done. It's like, I, I remember when they brought back before Watchmen, and it was one of those, it was not bad, but it wasn't quite, this is so complimentary to that and just it really opens up the DC universe in an all new way yeah well and I even liked some of the the artwork of um, I'm looking at a panel here where you know we're seeing the in Japan with the kaiju and right, there's, yeah, a, there's a character there that I remember with the with the hair and the samurai. green yeah, the samurai. Didn't he like to do a swirl yeah. or something? Yeah, the tornado. Yeah, the whirlwind. And, yeah. yeah, the whirlwind thing. And then and then the animal vegetable mineral mineral man. Yeah, I yes. love I love that whole bit. Like he was mm. eating the the um, the human yeah, traffickers. Yeah, that was. Great. <laughs> but you know the, the artwork. Um, even like the 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 doomed organization and seeing the people there and mm -hmm. and stuff. But it's and and even Firestorm. You get to see him, but. Um, you know, the, just the artwork there. It's like, it's like the old school. Yeah. Of, uh, like how I remember the these characters, not new. Uh, new. It's more of the old school stuff, and it uh, it really resonated with me. Got nostalgic. Um, mm -hmm. Just seeing that one page alone. It's oh, not. Yeah. It's not aping the Watchmen style. It's like you said, guy. It's compliment. It's complimenting it. It's right. Acting as. A kind of seamless sequel, so to speak. You know, there's it's keeping the same framework, which you know is we've talked about before with each of the you know the panel grids and stuff like that, and some of the you know same techniques. But he's it doesn't feel dated, so to speak. Yeah. It feels very fluid, and we, you know we get a little bit of you know undercurrent again of the um, heroes and the villains and. You know, like you're talking about Danny and uh, Japan and um, uh, Markovia. Was that the mm -hmm. country? Um, um, but we got a little bit more, you know, information about yeah. all the heroes being dispersed and all that. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things this does. It continues the through line of talking about but not answering what the mm -hmm. Superman theory is and what right. the world's doing about it and where yeah. that thread's leading. But the it, only thing it does clarify, sorry, uh, the only thing it does clarify is that Superman is the only metahuman that has like a free pass like yeah. around the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Yep. Giving him he, all all the countries are are okay with him doing whatever he wants. He's he's uh he's fair I'm game. Not, and yeah, he's that was proven a, himself. Was interesting. That's why. He's proven mm-hmm. himself that he is a hero and he is there and he is helping. Right. So it makes you wonder, um, what besides him being Superman? I mean, I get it. I'm like, who else doesn't merit up to that level? You have Wonder Woman. You have uh, Aquaman. You know, all Flash. The other I mean, all... like, why wouldn't they have some sort of similar stature, right. um, or at least some sort of in continuity reason why they're not you know held up there well wasn't the oh never mind I might be thinking of the Injustice storyline of the Mm -hmm. Flash was like sent to prison and then they sentenced him he could no longer be a hero so he was living and doing some menial labor somewhere but see, I, I can't remember that now if that's from Injustice or if that's a new 52. Mm-hmm. So, I want to say that's a new 52, though. I, I, I think just out of all the heroes, Superman is the most selfless. I'm sure all the other characters, even Wonder Woman has her own motivations and, and loyalties within. And, and, of course, Batman, his methods are means to an end, so he's always just been accepted, but just at that minimal level. But not even anymore in this time frame. I mean, it's the mob that beat and broke the bat that mm-hmm. all, that allowed him to be captured in the first place. I mean, the world's right. already already turned on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so the second to last page you should all take a look at is really, really beautiful because you have Rorschach's mask on the ground. Mm-hmm the top panel, then you have Black Adam on the screen, Batman getting up, then you have a picture of Reggie in the fifth uh, image, and then you have an envelope going to Lois Lane. Lois Lane. Yes. So is he sending her the journal? Yeah, so yeah, some sort of journal. And then you have Batman picking up Rorschach's mask, Mm -hmm. and then you have Vite at the bottom, two men were playing chess, None came out alive, and then you have Doctor Manhattan's foot yeah. on the same checkerboard. So I think that's really, really uh, beautifully set up. Mm. Uh, well, um, yeah. Who who is Black Adam punching there? Somebody in Jerusalem. Yeah, well, it makes it look like his head exploded. It <laughs> did. Pretty, pretty <laughs> that's why it looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but this issue definitely delivered on so many things that we had questions about. Mm-hmm. Um, and but it still gave us more. It, right. It's still, it's still feeding us. It, it's feeding us, but it's not making us full yet. We're yeah. still hungry for a little bit more. Yeah, because Vite now has a new plan to save... Yeah. All the worlds. Both. Yeah, both yeah. worlds. Like, like what? What is this? What's this plan of his? And then, like, how did he come up with it so quickly, well, just off the top? He's the smartest man ever. He's a genius. <laughs> yes. Is he really though? No, and so what happened to the comedian in, in all this? He still just got beat up, and that's he got left. Is that what happened? I guess. Yeah. Because um, he was, was getting beat. And then the Joker touched him, and then Rorschach beat the shit out of the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. So he's well, still he's still sitting in the. Yeah, because there was that scene that jo- Joker joy buzzard Batman in the mouth. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that was, yeah, yeah, that was, I love that. Like, damn, I also Joker. love the flamethrower yeah. under his <laughs> crotch. That was pretty funny. There were so many good classic Joker moments. Oh yeah, and it, there's one where Veet is using the the cat and the power and everything, and it's going all that, and the Joker's just in the background going, "Yeah." <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, lightning, you know, really blue lightning classic. going all over. Yeah, that really is classic Joker. I mean, he's vicious and he's crazy, but he's also having a good time while doing it. Yep. He, he's a man who truly enjoys his work of chaos. Yeah. yeah. So 
Vite uses the Green Lantern's power to magnify the magnitude of his the kitty cat. Um, with the Bobastus. Bobastus. Mr. Boombastus. Yeah. Um, and that and summons Green Lantern him. ends up with the marionette and the mind. <laughs> mind if we take this? Mm-hmm. So that's going to be kind of interesting oh. to see what they do with that. Yes. Uh, and then they also still continue the story of Nathaniel Carver, the kind of black and white series that we've been getting some information of over the past series. It continues again, and Manhattan actually goes into a theater. Where mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. They're sitting there in the theater. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. The character Carver Coleman is actually playing chess. Yeah, so, yeah I, see, the, I see the chessboard right now. Yeah, because that's that's actually a callback because he, he was telling that story at the beginning about yeah. uh, how what he what Doctor Manhattan did to uh, cause things to happen, and then he mentions the two guys playing chess, and then yeah. um, them getting killed, and then right there at the end, it harkens back. Yeah, two men so playing chess. Really tight. Yeah, really tight issue. Really, really. Oh yeah, I, I was very. I've, I've been enjoying this ride, but I, I was just very impressed with this issue overall. Everything just really stood out to me. Yeah, it's really funny because I mean that's like what we said about issue six. I know, and and here it is issue seven, and we're we're like you know this is the best one. This <laughs> this is freaking awesome. And still, that's, that's it a nice can't get any better than that. this. It's just, it, it's not only satisfying, but it's just improving itself. I mean, it's 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 been a consistently enjoyable read all the way through, and it, it's just nice to see that seven issues in, we're getting a quality story, and mm-hmm. it's not cheap and easy cash in. I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, and same here. No was oh, what's that? There's been no miniseries like with the Mime and Marionette that we were kind of worried about, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, right. we'll try to dilute the, but yeah, yeah, it just wasn't a bunch of empty hype, and I'm, I'm just as a reader, I'm grateful for that. Yep. With so many things that fall victim to its own hubris and hype, this is one of the few things that's been like, nope, they've <coughs> delivered so far. We're over halfway in now, so mm-hmm. that's, you know. Over 50% amazing stuff, so even if the next few issues suck, they delivered, you know, more yeah. than we expected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so where do you think it's going next? Well, we got to get to the Superman Manhattan fight, but I, I think that it should, you know, stretch out a little bit longer. Um, when yeah, you I, I, I honestly... Like I honestly don't think that's going to happen until, if anything, issue 11 or the very beginning issue 12. Yeah. And then Agreed. resolve, you know, the rest of the issue will resolve um, everything. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what's been laid before us. Can we cipher any thing of where it's going? I mean, the Mime and Marionette have the Lantern. What are, right, they, they have their are they going to find their child? Maybe. I don't know how the lantern... Is the third wish still in the lantern? I mean, because they, they made it like a genie, where the first one did this. And the, well, hold on. That death, was... life, and power. Yeah. The first one was death. Bless you. And then there was life, and the third is power. So I think they grabbed it during the power phase. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that would make sense because that's how the cat was amplified. Mm-hmm. The power of the lamp amplified the thing. So, unless it just resets, it resets and now it's they're going to spread the wishes. Now it's death. They're going to spread um, the death. That 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 would be awful. What if she has a miscarriage or whatever? Well, she doesn't. Or at least I mean, she at least. Oh has... well, she wouldn't because Doctor Manhattan's seemingly timely and thing. So who, who's her she's kid? Had, she's had one kid. Now she's going to have another. Right. right, and, and so. one of them, he saved for a reason. Mm-hmm. So who's oh, her... gotcha! Yeah, that's a good question. So who's her kid? Yeah. Become that's so important. 
Right. And then you have the new identity for Rorschach, where that's going to go. Right. Um, and how does Batman really figure into the all this? With, you know, his year-long story arc that's going on. How does that kind of wrap its way into here? What does Saturn Girl do? And you know, this whole lots of little. Right, Johnny Thunder. Will he get his thunderbolt back? Well, yeah. you saw the 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 scene where Saturn Girl goes like, "No, wait, that's not how that happens." Right in the 30th century, she yeah, she's, or where she says she's from. Yeah, she's like, "I'm here to do this certain thing, and so you don't need to worry because this, you're gonna get it back, or you know, don't worry." Yeah. And then something happens, and she's like, "Wait, that's not how that." It was when Bite came back. Yeah. And cold clocked them both. <laughs> like the jerk he is. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we, we also have all the stuff that's going on in the world with, with Black Adam and, and Firestorm and, and all of them, the Superman theory and all that. I mean, I would like to hopefully get that resolved also. Yeah. Um, it, and it could be resolved just like how it's continuing on. We only get one or two pages in in an issue that is kind of explaining the developments and all that. I'd be fine as long as it it's not leaving me with any questions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it'll be focused on that much, but I think it'll always be present in the background somewhere somehow. Right. So yeah. So it's wait your thoughts, your mind. I can read it. No, that's not supposed to happen. You can't. And then. Yeah. Yep. So she saw what he was thinking of doing to save everybody. His plan. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. So it may not be Superman and. Manhattan fighting that causes anything. It could just all be fight. To be fight in Manhattan. Yeah. Because they're the two that's playing chess. Superman's not playing chess with them. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. We'll find out in what, another four months? Or was it next November. November. So the, ne- the next issue is November? Yeah, November 28th or something. 26, 28, something like that. Oh, man, that's too long. Come on, man, hurry up. It's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can really, really tell they're, they, they're utilizing the extra time that they've had to make a quality product. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, 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 abs- I'm actually fine with them taking their time rather than half-assing their way through. Me too. Because this is by far one of the best things I've read in a long time. Speaking yeah, of, absolutely. real quick, are you reading the new Sandman stuff? Yes, um, I have read The Dreaming, uh, or no, no, or whatever it is, the Sandman, like the one that had all the, the yeah. starter kit of it and all that. I was just curious, so we'll talk about that on another show. I was, <laughs> we could talk about that October 3rd when we're at Oil Town Comics. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we'll fancy. Part of our comic books discussion. Yeah. yeah. Talk about what we're reading what we're not reading what we refuse to read well we thought about reading but just never got around to it yeah but yeah doomsday clock eight is due out november 28 lots of eight okay eight 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 nice Uh, all right well i guess that's it just we need to end this here and, and just go into hibernation till then so yes we'll see you again in the doomsday clock series in the two months <laughs> but we'll still be live yeah. every wednesday night on mixer so you can catch us there that's right but until the next doomsday clock ticks tick tock get all stops got to the hot tick tock get all stop there's another copyright <laughs> <laughs> but in the I'm meantime not. did the disney cryopods <laughs> as yeah. always it's all geek to us Bye. Bye. Bye, the clock. Tick tock on the clock. Tick tock, get up. Stop, stop to the heart. Tick tock, get up. Stop.